right, what's up, everybody? This is Joe. Jill. Ed. From Pissing Razors. And you're watching Aftershocks TV. TV, baby. All right, welcome everyone back to another episode of Aftershocks TV at aftershockstv.com on the CMS Network. And both Tom and myself would like to welcome our guest on today's episode. We got with us bassist Eric J. Morgan. He joins us today. Thanks for coming on, Eric. What's going on, yep. man? How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. Doing great. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Of yeah. course, man. Well, Eric, I mean, normally when I when I do an intro to the episodes here on the show, I tend to do a little brief, you know, overview of the of the, you know, background of our guests and music. But since, man, you've got you're handed so many different bands and projects over the years. I would have taken me probably like five or ten minutes to to go through everything, you know. So yeah, um, hey, yeah, yeah. And try to stay busy. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. So yeah, so this one I just decided, you know what? We're going to introduce your name, and then we'll go through everything uh, one step at a time because we definitely got you know a lot of stuff to talk about, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And I guess we'll start things off, Eric, uh, with what I guess what you've been doing most recently. Um, sure. which uh, your involvement, which was one of my top five records of last year, 2023, which was, uh, the Sapo release from Patriarchs in Black, My Veneration. I know you played uh, bass on a handful of these songs, I believe. And, uh, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And of course, you know, Patriarchs in Black, just for the l listeners and viewers out there that don't know, uh, features obviously drummer Johnny Kelly, who is of course, Mostly well known from uh, goth metal icons, typo negative, and he's pretty much the drummer behind every other band on the planet right now. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Quiet Riot, Kill Devil Hill. I mean, it's just it's, it goes on and on. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I and mean, of course, you know, Patriarchs in Black is also uh, Dan Lorenzo. I mean, Mister, mm. yeah, you know, Dan is one of those guys, and you can, I know, you know, you obviously know this, Eric. It's one of those guys that's just become this insane i tell him this all the time every time i interview dan just this master riff maestro i mean he's just cranking out albums left and right these days with i mean patriarchs and black cash is king and i yeah. mean uh vessel of light yep, yeah right, i right. mean you go down all of it um and i believe i saw too that the guys got they're getting close to wrapping up the third record too, Patriarchs on Black. I saw yeah. too, man. <laughs> he's he's not sitting on his ass, you know. He's really <laughs> cranking stuff out. You know, he, yeah. he does. He writes stuff and you know, he and Johnny go back and forth, tighten it up, and then it's like, Hey, you wanna play bass on this one? Yeah, sure. You know, and they shoot it over and yeah, nice. those guys don't uh they don't rest. <laughs> no, they know, man. So are you are you gonna be involved with the new uh Patriarchs on Black at all? Yeah, I played on a, a track already. Yeah. Oh, okay. I did one them shot it out it's got working titles so there's no you know final title because there's no lyrics or anything on it just sure. yet so yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's okay. just got working titles i don't even remember what this one i think it was called quickly i think that was oh, okay. the uh the working title of that song yeah oh very cool so i mean how, how did you get involved with you know with johnny and dan i mean obviously johnny i knew you guys were both in i know pale horse named death correct so yes is that how you guys know each other or did you guys know each other go way back or, or yeah John, i've known johnny a really uh, like a long time yeah it's um okay. it goes back to like the brooklyn days mid 80s you know like 85 ish when okay. i started playing in this uh band first order back mm -hmm. then and um playing a lot of local shows it was like seem was a little different than i guess you would say now and because it's it's more it was more like brother bands and everybody was always trying to mm -hmm. hook each other up help each other out you know and johnny and kenny were in a band called uh hellraiser and it was Kenny Hickey okay. and Johnny mm -hmm. were in that. And I remember at some point it came up and they, they wanted to get on a show at Animal Hall. And we had kind of juice there, even though we were like kids. And we were like, yeah, put these guys on the show. Like <laughs> the kind of like that kind of is what started like, you know, me knowing Johnny. We didn't hang a whole lot back then, but we were always in each other's company, you know, and played shows, things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and, and Tom sent me something yesterday that you mentioned to him, too, but you and Johnny, that you guys, you know, you obviously have worked on now a bunch of projects, but one that's pretty interesting he told me about was that you've got, you guys have created some music with none other than living color vocalist Corey Glover, mm. correct? Tell, tell us about that, and are those yeah. songs ever going to get released to the public any anytime? Eventually? Yeah, that's, I'm actually, I mean, it's been, it's been on my to-do list for forever and it's things, you know, mm. pop up and all that, but it's, I'm currently mixing all that stuff now. And, um, I got okay. a new, 
recording system, which is kicks the ass of the old one I had. And it's, uh, it's sounding so much better. So it was kind of maybe divine intervention that it took so long for it to actually happen. Cause it's going to really come out. It's going to sound so much better than it would have sounded on my previous system. Plus of what I've learned, you know, over the years and during the whole COVID lockdown, I really dug into recording stuff mm. and mixing stuff like more so than I, I had in the past. I've been doing it, you know, recording in my bedroom since I was a kid, you know, on mm. four tracks and things like that. But now it's, uh, it's so much better. And this stuff with Corey is killer. You know, it's, it's covers, but it's mm. really cool covers. Like, you know, stuff I've been wanting to do and stuff that, uh, cause Eddie Heedles is involved in that too. Okay. And um, stuff that he brought in, he's like, hey, we should cover this. And I'm like, hey, that's a good one for Corey. Yeah, that sounds like that. We could probably do something cool with that, you know. Nice. So, yeah, yeah, that, that should be like a nice little EP coming out, you know, again, in the, in the middle of mixing it now. So. Very cool. Yeah. Sweet. yeah cool. Hey, Eric, I mean, just for the audience, obviously, doesn't know that, you know, you and I have got a history. And I'll tell them briefly about that is your wife used yeah. to work with uh, with Kirsten, right? Kirsten, I always get Kristen yeah, and Kirsten mixed up. Kristen, thank yeah, you. I work yeah. with a Kirsten. So Kirsten and I used to work in the same company. We, she's a she's the kind of person that I would gravitate towards. We were just chit chatting and got to know her a little bit, and we're talking about music. I can't remember what the um, uh, what the discussion was, and then she mentioned pale horse named death and i went hang on a second i i and i picked up my phone i go like you mean these guys and said yeah my my husband plays this get the fuck out of here he does not so <laughs> so and i being a big huge metal fan i was immediately drawn to the conversation and then eric and i texted and we kept in contact we had a couple of beers back in jersey a few years ago yeah. and then when when matt actually said um because you know we did our, our as everybody did in january the top 10 of you know 2023 and uh, Matt had, had patriarchs in there. I says, uh, I know the guy. And he says, say what now? So this whole just open up the conversation to having you on tonight to talk about it. And, you know, based on, on the subject matter that we were going to go through, I have got eight or nine questions to try and squeeze into 30 minutes. I could have had 30 questions. So I've got to start somewhere. But, you know, <laughs> right. on that Patriarchs album, um, first of all, it's a phenomenal record. Just yeah. Uh, and I have it, you know, Matt and I just, we share the love of that album. We genuinely do. Awesome. Um, but th that version of Cashmere on that is, oh, that. Just, it I, honestly, first of all, when I saw Cashmere, I was going, well, God, another Cashmere, really? Do I need to hear another one of those? But God damn, <laughs> you guys nailed that. And the yeah. singing, the voice on that oh, song Jimmy. is just off the chart. Tell me a little bit about recording that and just his voice and his presence. Oh God. Uh, Jimmy Neko, he's amazing. Like he's, he's always been amazing. Like, you know, I met him. We both worked in the same uh, piercing shop back mm. in uh, Jersey and Hawthorne is pleasurable mm. piercings. We, mm. That's why I met him. And he was just so freaking talented. It was so obvious that the kid, you know, he's a star, you know, he's just had it, you know, he's, he's the real deal. And uh, when I heard he was singing on it, I was like, wow, we finally got on a song together. <laughs> like, yeah, it took 26 nice. years, but we're finally on a song. And um, yeah, they came up with um, wanted to do Cashmere. Johnny asked if I wanted to do bass for it. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. It's like my favorite Zeppelin song. So yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, hey, do you need uh, strings and keys and all the orchestra stuff for that too? And he's like, yeah, I had somebody in mind. What, you want to do it? And I said, yeah, I do that stuff all the time. So it, that... That was a lot of fun, a lot of work, but yeah. totally like, you know, me getting the sh the horn section stuff in, like finding it in tablature mm. <laughs> and crap mm -hmm. like that, and then translating that to the guitar, and then going okay, and then playing it on keyboard, and getting that stuff together. It took a long time, but when it was done, I was like, holy shit, this sounds yeah, it's I really I was so happy with how it came out. Like you yeah, know, I, yeah. I, I wasn't even looking forward to hearing it because I heard Kashmir, the song, and then all the all the versions, and I just put on my headphones and then just took them off and went, what the fuck did I just hear right there? Because it was <laughs> it was seriously that good. So, oh, um, awesome. so Thank what, you. what's happening with Patriarch right now? We're, what's like 2024 looking for, even into 25? I think they're they're just still doing the, the third record. Now they're right. in the middle of that. I think that's supposed to come out in this, like October or something. Okay. It's like, I think it's coming out like, you know, they're not, again, they're not resting on their laurels. It's just, you know, they're coming right out, you know? So I think that's really it. I mean, there's no like shows or anything planned because it's kind of tough with logistics and with how busy Johnny is because there's right. so many different people, yeah, right. you know, brought into it. 
it it makes it tough to be like okay who's the singer for this because each person brings their thing to the table that makes right. each song they're on so special right. Right. you know yeah, I get that. And what about, um, like obviously, we've got a couple of projects I want to jump around on because I want you to tell us what you're doing. Tell me a little bit about this um, Alice Cooper um, Solid Rock Foundation. That's uh, That caught my attention. Yeah, yeah. That's um, that's uh, one of the guys who did, uh, he sang on the uh, My Veneration record, The Dead and Gone. Mm. Uh, it's Bobby Jensen. He, uh, he does this thing called Almost Cooper. He does this huge, like, real big production like rock shows stuff and it's it's freaking impressive <laughs> you know they nail it and he uh asked he's like hey you want to work on this because he and i i i heard him sing dead and gone on the patriarchs mm -hmm. record and i was like who is this guy and like you know they gave me his name and i kind of connected with them told him i was like hey you know it's I think he did a great job he's got like that snotty 70s rock vocal you know that's that yeah. i love and kind of miss uh -huh. like he's got um he doesn't sound like Bon Scott, but he's got like that attitude, like that I like about Bon Scott. If, right. if you know, it's like kind of the vibe, very seventy snotty rock, and I, I dig it. that. And he ended up reaching out to me, asking me if um you know I'd be interested in doing a track for this uh, benefit record, like it's an LP coming out for uh, the Alice Cooper's Solid Rock Foundation, which is like they do stuff for kids, like. You know they can come in and learn how to do whatever you know like he has everything covered it's not just music it's it's pretty rad and uh yeah we did uh he asked if i would do it uh we're doing black widow or the black widow and i asked uh bob pantella who i've been wanting to work with for a long time he's a drummer for uh monster magnet mm -hmm. i asked him because he and i've been you know saying oh we should get together oh we should get together you know like over and over we, i was like hey he's perfect for this let me get in because Johnny, I was gonna have, I was gonna have Johnny on it, but he did something already for it. So I was like, okay, let me get, mm. you know, let me get somebody else in here and uh, ask Bobby. And uh, he was totally down. You know, he did it. And then I brought in uh, Oscar Loi from this band, Vintage Caravan from Iceland, that we oh, played yeah. Bakken with. Great oh, you heard band. them? Oh, I love them. I love oh, them. great, great, mm. great band, mm -hmm. killer band. Them. Like you yep. know, all of them are monster players. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I've been wanting to work with him since we played with them at Vakken in like 2014. Like it's on the poster, wow. I have the Vakken poster hanging right okay. there, and I see their name all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were kind of we were next to each other, like in the tent artist area, and we just kind of talked, but nothing really heavy, you know, not too deep. We just mm -hmm. kind of chatted, mm -hmm. and then we played Damnation Festival in 2019 in Leeds. We were sharing a dressing room, and I was like, "All right, somebody's telling oh, yeah, me, okay. yeah." <laughs> Because yeah. I was like, this guy, because I, I was like, wow, these guys are killer. You know, he's a great guitar player. I really want to do something with him. And like I said, when that happened in uh, 2019, again, like saying divine intervention, something you yeah. know, made that happen. And I was like, somebody saying, like, you need to work with him. Like that. So <laughs> I, I that. asked him and he jumped right in. Yeah, did it. Freaking blew my mind. Like, you know, can't wait for you guys to hear that. It's yeah, so when is it, when is coming out, Eric? When is that uh, on? That release? I'm not sure because I'm not on that side of it. Like okay. uh, we're doing the song for it, but there's I, I think it's fairly soon. Like they're they're gunning for it to be soon, but I don't have a timeline for it though. Okay, sweet. Fortunately, sweet. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's out yeah, and Bob Pantella, I mean, yeah, I mean, not just Monster Magnet, but also uh, Atomic Bitchwax. Mm -hmm. I'm a drummer, too, one of my favorite bands. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, he's a great, great drummer. And that's what's kind of cool, you know, just in general. I mean, the, you know, I, I, I was talking to Dan about this. I talked to a few guys about this, you know, with in Jersey, you know, you've got like sort of like those guys, you know, there's like that sort of, I would call it like the Jersey crew there where everyone really kind of just like, you know, you have the Monster Magnet and Thomas Bixwax always help each other out, fill in for each other all the time if yeah. someone can't go on tour. Um, you know, it, it's such a, a good little group of this. Steve Zing obviously has his thing, you totally. know, with, with yeah. Johnny. With, you know, it's just, you know, and like you said, you're a Brooklyn guy, right? So originally, yeah. right? Yep, so, yep. I mean, and Where I know wins. like, you know, yeah, and so... When I, I grew up in Queens, and you know, I remember, um, you know, growing up in New York. I for a little while I worked at you know over at Roadrunner Records there for for a little while, um, oh. and you know I was involved with the hardcore scene, the metal scene, and everything. And even though I mean, both obviously, you know, New York and New Jersey, are so you know they're right next to each other, obviously. But it always felt to me like you know the the musical circles was sort of at least back in the '90s and so forth was sort of 
separated. You know what I mean? It was like there was really kind of two different scenes that didn't, I mean, you never really saw too many Jersey bands coming over to like Queens and Brooklyn and, you know, a lot of bands from Queens and Brooklyn did go over to Jersey, obviously, but, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, what's your, I mean, just from coming, I think from, you know, the, that side now being in Jersey and being around these guys, like I always said too about, you know, New Jersey and the difference between like New Jersey and New York was that, you know, New Jersey, uh, New York, when it came to like metal, it wasn't really the best sort of metal town. Brooklyn had great metal, but you know, Queens and Manhattan, was more punk oriented, but you know, you went, right. but Jersey really had the metal, uh, you know, Jersey and upstate New York to me were really the places where, you know, metal was more prevalent. What, what's your take on that? I mean, just being from Brooklyn and now living in Jersey, what's your, and being in all these bands, you know, you were in hardcore bands, I'm going to get to in a second, but talk about like what you saw growing up about really metal in New York compared to, you know, the outer boroughs, you know, the New Jersey and, and upstate and so forth. Well, I, out of, like for Jersey, I mean, you had we had some bands coming over. I mean, like Dan I I with Hades and Nonfiction, oh, yeah. you know, they're mm -hmm. Jersey guys. And I, yeah, I can't even tell you how many shows that first order we shared bills with, you know. But mm -hmm. we're just we're a little. There's like maybe five years between us in age. Okay. So at that time, like, you know, there was no way Dan was hanging out with sixteen year old me. So <laughs> we never we never hung out. It's just because that's mm -hmm. like an eternity, like five years difference, you know. Or 21 to be 15 or something but uh hades was always playing around non-fiction you know jersey guys uh blessed death was another one okay. i don't know what happened to them i really dug them they they were jersey guys they they mm -hmm. came in we saw that a lot but metal wise for the scene we were in that really nascent thrash scene like it was still okay. pretty freaking new Mm -hmm. when we started like you know when first order started up and, and i was playing okay. with other guys you know in this band subjugator you know with guys who ended up being in first order later on okay. and things like that so it was always um you know you had like carnivore you know mm -hmm. huge local heroes you know uh, mm -hmm. christ who else chaos k-a-o-s mm -hmm. uh guy mm -hmm. anthony asty mm -hmm. beast you know on you know beast bass player like you know kind of like a mentor of mine helped mm -hmm. me out a lot too um geez like i can't even i'm trying to think of other like the old head guys that like mm -hmm. you know we looked up to <laughs> i'm just drawing a blank sure sure but yeah. it was more like there was a lot of like a bigger thrash thing going on sure, in sure. our area and then it started mm -hmm. to get kind of crossover ish we had bands mm -hmm. like uh leeway Leeway, and stuff. Yeah. I think they're New York guys too. Maybe Queens. Mm -hmm. I don't Queens, think they're from yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah. Queens, yeah. Right. So yeah. I saw a lot of like thrash bands and stuff coming up and like hardcore bands and mm -hmm. things like that. But it was, uh, there was always a pretty big metal scene. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. it all started to kind of turn on its head a little bit. Honestly, I think some of that, a lot of that had to do with like Metallica wearing like GBH shirts and discharge shirts and stuff. Cause then a lot okay. of metal heads, we're starting to get into like crust punk, you know, mm, and then okay. that got into like them more like the exploited, which is more like straight up punk, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. So that stuff started to influence a lot of what was going on, which is where, you know, I think you get some of the bio, like the biohazard stuff from like where it was like, they mm -hmm. were really mixing all that stuff. Plus some kind of hip hop kind of vibe in their mm -hmm. stuff. And like yeah. some dub stuff, even like going on, like some reggae ish influence without it being obvious. You know, mm -hmm. so I think that's it became a real cool melting pot of that style, you know. Yeah, no, it definitely did it. You know, and that was the thing too in the nineties. Uh, you know, like I always said, you know, a lot of the bands in the nineties. We're going to talk about, you know, one of the bands you were in, uh, Lament, because yeah. um, that's you know I rem totally remember you guys. I remember the, the Levitate record that was out on uh, Two Damn Hype Records there. I know that was the, the Philly label that was signed a lot of New York hardcore bands. But it was interesting how a lot yeah. of bands, because that was a very interesting, like you said, time, because you had, obviously, you said the crossover thing was starting to kind of die out, still hanging on a little bit, but you had all those urban influences coming in with, like you said, Biohazard and Madball and so forth. But then you also had kind of what Lament was to me was you guys had more of that alternative, you know, angle to to your sound, a little more the the, the post hardcore post-metal sort of alternative right yeah, angle. yeah definitely so yeah and, and so i mean like you said it was bad you know i mean there was a lot of bad especially you know it was like into another and orange nine millimeter i mean yeah, it, yeah. Like you said it was it was yeah it was all this 
sort of coalescing of, and it was a great time because I love them. You can go to a, I, I, you know, I would go to these hardcore shows, but it wasn't necessarily like all the hard, the bands were hardcore. You had Candiria that was like jazz influenced, and then oh god, had, yeah, kill right? great band, yeah, great band, yeah, great so guys it was, too, it was, yeah, yeah. And um, and you guys, you know, you like you said, but lament. Well, you guys, you know, you had that record. What had happened to the band? I mean, you guys were making some noise, and then it just kind of did. You guys just kind of disband. You could talk about lament a little bit there. Yeah, that I was. I was on the seven inch that came out, the uh, okay. Drowning Room seven inch. Drowning I did room. that okay. with them, okay. and then um, things just changed, you know, for me in life, and I ended up moving to Florida. Oh, okay, and like to Miami. Then I was like producing mm-hmm. salsa bands for a while, which was a trip. Oh, wow. <laughs> but that's something else. <laughs> that's another story. Um, we, it's. I was coming back for shows and stuff. Like I'd, I'd fly back mm-hmm. and do stuff, and then it just kind of. I, I ended up moving upstate New York, and then it just. I kind of just ended up leaving it, just okay. because of the mm-hmm. distance and stuff. And I was just mm-hmm. learning to drive because you know, growing up in Brooklyn, I didn't have to drive. You know, I have buses and trains yeah. everywhere. So <laughs> I yeah. learned how to do that there. <laughs> and it just, it kind of just fell away. And I was starting to get into doing other stuff. Like I was getting more yeah. into um, like industrial mm-hmm. and things yeah. like that. And like, you know, ministry and Nine Inch Nails, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, w- I was kind of going in another direction. So it's like, not, I wouldn't say I outgrew it, but it's just my focus and my headspace was in a different spot. Even though when I heard Levitate, I was like, wow, this is freaking great. Like, you know, mm-hmm. and I, mm-hmm. I would have loved to have done that, you know, and mm-hmm. been in a part of that too. It's just, you know, you never know. It's like hindsight's twenty twenty. Sure. But um, yeah, I think it just kind of, you know, faded maybe. I mean, again, I, I could ask Joe Affy and John yeah, Scantato yeah. for how it actually finally, you know, like disbanded or something. I'm not mm-hmm. exactly sure. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious. Well, speaking of mm-hmm. Joe Affy, you, you – so – um, I think uh, Tom mentioned me. You also were in maximum penalty for a bit. Is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like when Lament was. It was they were becoming. Okay, it, it was like out that. of maximum penalty, sure. yeah. becoming Lament. So I was never really like I never okay. gigged with Max Penn. It Got was it. um, it was like okay. the crossing of that, and then it was like Lament, like that. Okay. So and the sound was changing. You know, it was like you said, most more post hardcore, you know, yeah. kind of sound, okay. yeah. as opposed to was, being like was, straight hardcore. Yeah, I always loved Jimmy Williams' voice. I mean, I always thought he had one of the best voices in hardcore with Maximum Penalty. I, that's just one of those yeah, bands. Yeah. Their last record was great. Life and Times was oh, one of my great. great Yeah, records. I just got that. Yeah. Joe sent me a copy. <laughs> oh, really? Nice. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, so we yeah. traded him the first order. but Not traded him. I, I sent him the first order one as a, a CD as a thank you, and then he just he got back and sent me some bunch of vinyl, and Life and Times was in there as well. That's a, that's a great record. Sweet. It is. It is. Now you mentioned before first order. Yeah. Um, uh, you, like you said, thrash band out of you know Brooklyn there mm-hmm. in the eighties. Tell us a bit about that band and why. I mean, um, that I guess now I'm hearing that you're going to be remastering, releasing some of those songs. It's like about forty years old or so, right? I mean, yeah, so the oldest I, one is wow. thirty six years or thirty eight years old. The first demo, something crazy wow. like that. Wow. <laughs> so, so what made it's you not- now at this point in time? Be like, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's re-release all these. Have you had a lot of interest from people that wanted to see you put, you know, re-release those songs? Yeah, there were a bunch of people. I mean, that's another one that was like, like the Corey stuff. It's been on my to do list for for again forever. Mm-hmm. And um, I did have a few people that were constantly like, come on, man, what's going on? Because I had like um, for the first demo, I had a decent copy that somebody had. I, I don't remember who the hell I got it from, but I did a tape transfer of that. And I had that in my uh, like digital files of like a nice higher, the highest res I could get off a okay. tape deck into uh, my DAW. And had that and then i had from the guy who did our recording he had all the session files of everything so we had the individual oh, wow. uh, you know bass drums guitar vocal you know tracks mm-hmm. and uh for the second demo he had done some other remixes that i asked him about and he found them he, he this guy still had these tapes with all this stuff so he sent that to me and i just said you know let's it's you know now it's the time it's time to get it out and i've had a you know, a friend of mine, Mike Barrett, was like harassing me <laughs> to put it out. He's like, my tape yeah. is shot, you know, and I really <laughs> want to hear more First Order. And, you know, I had uh, my friend Mike Scandato, John Scandato's brother. And he's from mm-hmm. Inhuman. And, 
Newman, yeah. The Last Stand mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, he was like, dude, when are you going to put this stuff out already? You know, and like they, right. they were kind of the ones putting the fire under my ass on top. I mean, I wanted to do it, but mm -hmm. it was just kind of like, you know what? Let me just fucking do it, you know, get it done. Yeah. And it came out great. You know, my wife and my friend Lisa Serretta, they, they got together and did a killer layout. You know, we, we got like, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted it to look like and talked it over with the other guys in the band. And said, "Hey, what do you think of this?" And it just kind of uh, came together pretty quick. It was like a flurry of activity, you know, getting mm -hmm. it done. And then when it was done, it was like, "Holy shit, it's really done!" And you know, um, had faster and louder records, which put out okay, yeah. some of the patriarch stuff. Mm -hmm. I had uh, a dialogue with the guy there, and I said, "Hey, I got this band. You know, I was in in the '80s up to up until '91." And uh, we want to re-release our stuff. You know, would you be interested in putting that out? Because I saw that he had stuff kind of like that on his site. And it just, he was like, absolutely. And I was like, wow, that was easy. All right, cool. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then it's just, wow. okay. Then I really, that, that put everything into super high gear. Because I'm like, wow, it's, it's really, it's going to happen. You know, so now I got to really get it done, you know? So it's like, I was kind of chipping away at it, chipping away at it and mm -hmm. playing around with it. Then I was like, okay, now it's no sort of grindstone. Get it done. Yeah. Get it get it out. Done. And, yeah. And, and that came out and it, it moved and we were pretty blown away by um, how many people actually like, I was kind of like, is anybody going to fucking remember who the hell we were? <laughs> and stuff like that. Like, you know, it's like, God, I hope this guy doesn't make these like 300 copies and then we sell two. <laughs> you know, or something. Yeah, you know, I don't want to look like a dick. Yeah. So <laughs> it just kind of uh again, we were just impressed that that people said such That's nice great. stuff about us and and you know remembered us so fondly and mm. it was just really amazing, you know. That, yeah, uh, you you said that to me in a in a in a text because I knew that when you know I, when we when I when I have you on here that yourself and Matt would go like hyper local, like local bands and local whatever that a lot of people may not have heard of or they heard that they heard the name they're not really sure what the origins are so i knew i knew that i was going to sit back and just you know be the <laughs> be the the third mic kind of thing for this one and i'm totally okay with that because it's your scene from your time back then and you said that on a text to me last night about first order about that you you didn't appreciate that how influential potentially first order are so are you getting asked like we're asking about it matt's obviously knew the scene back then but are you getting you know, when you're in the conversations, not necessarily on podcasts, but just in the music conversations about Forced Order and their origins. And is that surprising you as to how you were just this band back in your day, finished in 1991 or whatever, and here we are all these years later having a conversation about it? Yes. Uh, to me, I, I, to all of us, you know, we were just really surprised, you know, just very surprised. And, mm. you know, hearing stuff like Alan uh, from The Life of Agony, he was like, oh, I loved you guys. I was in the pit for you guys all the time, you know, and, oh, and great. you know, just hearing that stuff and, and being like, oh, wow, you know, because when I first I had met Alan a bunch of times, but we hadn't really connected until I was really in a pale horse named Death. And mm -hmm. he was kind of like, so how do you figure into this? Like, how did you get in this? And I was like, oh, I said I was in first order. You know, and that's how I know Sal and Johnny and all those guys. He's like, wait a minute, you were in first order, you know, and. I was kind of like, oh shit, wow, okay, he remembered us. <laughs> you know, at wow. that time, that was like nice. 2000, was it 2011, you know, when we first started mm -hmm. talking about it. But um, yeah, it's just, it's funny to to hear like people, like one one friend of mine had said, uh, he's like, yeah, you guys were Meshuggah before Meshuggah, you know, and stuff oh, like wow. that. Because it, nice. it, it was real time signature, you know, kind of stuff, like kind of tricky-ish stuff. Mm -hmm. without it being obvious because our drummer always kept like the china going and 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 the snare but uh, with his feet he was doing something else so we'd be playing in five four but oh, people great. just latched on to the bah, 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 you know mm -hmm. the china and snare and it was uh it just it kind of grooved and we had like a big skinhead following we had long hair followings there was never any problems at our shows like you know it was wow that's a rarity kinda, for back then you know yeah. right right, right. Like, yeah. you know, and it's, we kind of got away with it. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. I mean, now I'm like, you know, my head, I shaved my head now, but mm -hmm. 
we were wearing Fred Perry's and Doc Martens with long hair and nobody fucked with us, you know, because they were yeah. like, oh, no, those guys are okay. Like, we got to pass, you know? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, there's nothing like, um, you know, going down those trips of uh, yesteryears. And I said to, I said this to you, Eric, we were just chatting last night. He said, it's like yeah. a couple of guys at the at the bar just having a beer, shooting the shit, talking about whatever. But fast forward to today, I know you're working on a new punk project. Tell us a little bit about that one. Oh, uh, which project? I'm sorry? A, a new punk project. Oh yeah, that's with, yeah, that, that's with uh, Mike Blanks from uh, Blank Seventy Seven. Mm-hmm. That's um, it's probably going to be called the New Stupid. I think that's <laughs> what we're going to go by. It's um, yeah, it's just another thing. It's like I met him uh, through. I had heard of Blanks, but I didn't realize that was him. I worked for this pharmaceutical place in Elizabeth back in like early two thousands. And I had like a motorhead. Sh- oh, he had a motorhead shirt on and I had a, like a Fred Perry and he was like, nice shirt. And I was like, likewise. And then one day we just ended up talking. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I met this guy, uh, Mike Blanks. And my wife went bananas because she loves Blank 77. She's like a punk rock mm. chick. She's real into that. Okay. And um, I just asked him, I was like, hey, you want to work on some stuff? And that started to happen, too. And then you know, I wrote a bunch of songs, I have like seven or eight songs and. I just got to wrap up the Corey stuff and then I'm going to have him come in and hear and finish his vocals and that'll come out too. And you is know, it straight up, like, is it straight up punk? Like what should we expect when we hear this? It's yeah, it's pretty punky. It's pretty straight ahead, but it's kind of like, um, I wouldn't call it pop punk, but it's, it's catchy and it's hooky, okay. but it's still really nasty and like got a nasty edge on it, you know? So it's not like, it, it doesn't sound like green day. Not that I have a problem with them. But it's not like that, but it's it's hooky because mm-hmm. Mike doesn't sing. Mike just sneers, you know, <laughs> so, and it works. And then I yell, I back him up like and I'm just yelling, you know, yeah. blowing yeah. my throat mm-hmm. out. And uh, that that should be out fairly soon, too. I, I, that's going to be out this year. I'm sure of it. Fine. We have to have you back on. You're doing so much projects. We got to have a recap in a couple know, of months right? to see yeah. where you're at. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm always doing something. <laughs> I'm yeah, always man. trying to stay busy, you know, even oh, if it's. Yeah. Not even this, if it's weird sound design shit, and I'm doing that yeah. too, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. now, with a, a, a Pale Horse named Death, I mean, um, you know, it's one of those bands, I mean, I guess I love, you know, what, what Sal does with, with, with his music and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know he's just always going through different band members, you know, like, I mean, left and right. I mean, and I know, you know unfortunately, he's been in, you know, the news lately, not for the the best reasons, you know, yeah, I mean, exactly. what's, yeah, what's, I mean, what's up with Sal? I mean, like, in terms of, like, is he, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to get you here to talk any crap about him or nothing, but I mean, like, you know, I know he's um kind of challenging to work with is what I hear from, you know, one or two people who worked with him before. But, uh, you know, I mean, let's put it this way. Is there a reason why you're no longer involved with, you know, does he, is he the type of guy that needs to kind of have different guys in and out of the band with that band just to kind of switch things up? Is that his... MO with with Pale Horse because it's uh, such a great you know band it really is yeah I mean I'm real proud of what the band did you know and we did do a lot you know it was together for like 10 years yeah, you know sure. there's a decent amount of stuff he's um you know I I don't really have any ill will towards the guy I mean I've known Sal since we were 16 and we used to hang out all the time he was in a band Toxemia back in the day and uh we used to play a lot together mm-hmm. it just he he's you know again i don't want to talk shit but it's like he's just kind of a little tough sometimes to deal with and then after the last run that we did i was just kind of like you know what you know there was there was an incident and i had said to everybody else like after this i'm 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 done you know i'm done Mm -hmm. with this and it it just became that then johnny was like yeah i'm done you know and then he left and then i think eddie left but then eddie's doing some like solos and stuff for him but i don't know really what else is going on i haven't actually talked to him since i left you know it's Mm -hmm. just i've seen that it was a lot of meltdowns and you know my friends because you know i can't see anything that he's doing on facebook because he's blocked me so i don't see anything yeah which i'm not looking (laughs) yeah 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 but I get the intel from like my friends. They'll be like, sure. if, I mean, it's not every little thing like, oh, look, Sal went and got a hot dog today. Oh, you know, like they're not yeah, telling yeah. me that. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, my. Yeah. yeah, they'll they'll tell me when something's really the pot's boiling know. over and there's there's a catastrophe. Mm-hmm. They'll be like, oh, my God, what's going on with him? I'm like, I don't know. 
you know, <laughs> you know more than I do, <laughs> you know, and then they'll all get screenshots of things and be like, holy shit. Okay. Wow. You know? yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a yeah. fucking talented guy and he's he got is. really good vision. He's just got to stop shooting himself in the foot, you know, mm-hmm. and, and like, that's, that's like the worst thing I can really say, yeah. you know, it's mm-hmm. just a lot of self-sabotage almost and it's unintentional. But, sure. Uh, yeah. You know, so yeah I, you, you, you'd often hear people like that, that like they're in their own way. You'd often hear that saying right there. So, and I, I can appreciate. I know people like that personally, not in the music uh, biz, but so. I mean, I got uh, just um, say another question. Are you still when you talk about look, you've jumped around, Eric, on different genres and scenes and timelines, yeah. and obviously, you know, you lived in you know New York, Jersey, now Florida. You said, are you still clued into like the overall rock metal punk scene? Do you like I, I like for me? I'm a huge rock and metal fan, so I'm jumping on Blabbermouth every day and Metal Injection and Brave Words, seeing what albums they release. Oh, the new Saxon is out, the new Priest is out. This guy's touring with that band, just bought a ticket last week for Symphony X, good old New Jersey band. Uh-huh, um, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I remember that so, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, I'm very much clued into the scene because I'm a fan. Of, Matt and I used to do this to shoot the shit. So, as you're getting older and going off for different kind of, you know, different ventures and life takes you different directions. Are you still clued into what's happening in the rock metal scene or do you just jump on board when something catches your eye? Usually, I mean, I, I keep on top of what's going on. I, I check out like the same sites you talked about. I'll check them and see what's going on and, you know, see what's happening. And a lot of times there's a friend of mine, Chris Chesney. He's a, uh, he's like encyclopedia metal, you know, it's like, I'll go to him and be like, Hey, and he'll, he'll be like, Hey, check out this band. He's like this, you like, cause a lot of times people send me stuff and it's, I'm kind of just on a different head space in a way. Like I'm still listening to like the old stuff and, sure. but the, and I'm going back into like old Miles Davis stuff. And I've been listening to a lot of that and getting a lot of takeaways that aren't necessarily jazz, but it's spinning things for me in another way, even on heavy music. Everything I write ends up being heavy. I, like I almost can't write not heavy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like everything I write is going to be heavy because that's what kind of does it for me. And that's, that's how it comes out from, for me, you know, it always mm-hmm. comes out like pissed off. It, it's always, something's angry. <laughs> even mm-hmm. if I'm not, you know, there's always something mm-hmm. pissed I off mean, about it, but there's like bands like, you know, I, I don't really follow tons of new bands, mm. you know, I, I'll say. Are you like, catching a couple of gigs as a couple, like Starlin Ballroom? Obviously, that's our, that was our local. And like, you know, yeah, that's, that's real close to me. Yes, yeah, so that's um, a great spot. So are you catching anybody if they come through town? I haven't really. No, no, I haven't really. Um, mm. I was going to go see Seven Dust with a friend of mine because he was yeah, just, was just to kind of have like a night out. It was sold out. Like, you know, what we got yeah. there, not when we got there, like uh, the day before, he's like, I looked into it. He's like, oh, it's sold out, you know, and. I was like, ah, shit, you know, but so yeah. we just hung out. Yeah, next time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just got together to hang out anyway, but it was, uh, but no, I haven't really been going to shows. Just, I've been pretty lame. <laughs> yeah. I've been like in my that own sucks. head and, and working on my own stuff here. Yeah. Like, you know, the stuff you can't see that to my left and right, like the studio. It's, I've been really yeah, digging yeah. into that, you know, and, yeah. and doing a lot of, uh, a lot of weird shit. You know, the new stuff I'm working on is heavy, but it's, it's gonna be a little weird you know i think um it might be an acquired taste <laughs> but mm, it's okay. it's i think it'll it's got its thing going and it's got its groove going but a lot of weird instrumentation like i'm just kind of like mm. i'm doing whatever i want you know and mm. it's pretty cool i'll shoot you uh i'll shoot you an mp3 oh, yeah. or something yeah. when it's presentable 100%. just you to check it out I trust yeah. you. I know you won't post it anywhere. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, Eric, you know, just you know, going back to Brooklyn, you know, um, obviously, you know, that's a place that's obviously changed a lot over the years. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I lived there for a little bit myself in, in Greenpoint for a little while, and um, I went to Brooklyn College. So I'm, I'm really familiar with it, and, you know, it's become – I mean, especially for music. I mean, obviously, you, you know, you had Lamores back in the day. I mean, like I said, it was just a hotbed. Nowadays, yeah. you know, Brooklyn has become, though, a very hot spot again for rock and metal. You know, you got St. Vitus there. I mean, there's a, there's a yeah. huge scene there of a lot of, like, sort of more, like, traditional metal, doom metal. You know, it's always been known for doom metal, obviously, but really a lot of traditional metal now coming out of, of Brooklyn. I mean... What I mean, like I, certain neighborhoods there that you would never even step foot in back in the day are like these posh neighborhoods now, like Bed Stuy and everything. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so I mean, just in general, I mean, when you go back to Brooklyn, just even from just being a musician 
and growing up going, you know, I mean, playing and going to Lemoore's and every, you know, I mean, what, what's the, what do you see? I mean, do you, is it sort of like a place that you're just like, I don't recognize this anymore? Is it like, a, wow, this is great what's happening here, especially with the music scene. Like I said, that is coming out of Brooklyn. I, I mean, I mean, there's great bands. There's a band called Sanhedrin that's out of there. There's this band called Tower. That's a really good band. Um, okay. Yeah, just bands. If you, yeah, if you want to check those out, those are just Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll check head. them out. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, have you ever have you gone back and seen like what, the old neighborhood? I mean, I don't know what 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 you know uh, t- part of Brooklyn you're from, but um, yeah, Sheepshead what, Bay is where I was. Sheepshead from. Bay, That's okay, so yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, so that was the heart of it right there. So I mean, what well, from the music perspective, I mean, that was such a great you know place for I mean rock and metal. Like I said, in the eighties and nineties, it was just I mean porn, you know, the bands coming out of the left and right, just a great scene. I yeah, mean. Yeah. Did, did, you know, grow. I mean, what do you do? You ever get to go back there and, and you know reminisce or see you know where Lamores used to be or whatever, and just kind of because yeah, I was told we, well, I interviewed uh, Kenny Hickey, you know, uh, last spring, and you know he was talking a little bit about that. You know that he lives, I know, in Staten Island now. He's not there anymore. But I mean, just when you go back down memory lane, and do you, do you notice that there's uh, is is it you know do you think it's like lost? You know what it was in terms of its music, or is it? Good again. Just give us your take because, like I said, I'm not back there anymore. I can't, you know, I, I live out in California now, so I don't see as much. But uh, just give me your take on that. What you? Yeah, I mean, now. it's definitely it's different. I mean, it's it's mm-hmm. cool that it's still got its own like scene going, even if it's not like say thrash or, or whatever or the scene that I'm mm-hmm. that I know. You know, sure. it's not. Um, it's still. It's. I'm trying to think of, like the best way to put it. It's to me, I think it's really cool that it's still like a fertile ground for mm. new stuff. Cause there are some really, even bands that aren't necessarily metal, you know, that are coming mm. out of there, just bands that are heavy, like, uh, was it a place to bury strangers? Like that band. Okay. Uh, okay. I think, yeah. I've heard freaking, that. it's like they're kind of like noise rock. Yeah. So there is stuff. still yeah. a real, there, there's, there's a thing like, I think Henry Rollins put it like the best way. He said, like, on the East Coast, He's like, everybody's packed in and everybody's packed in. They're all on top of each other. They're all fucking in each other's way and blah, 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 blah. He goes, that's why the music is so pissed off on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. He goes, then you go sure. out to California. He goes, and you got girls on roller skates and bikinis. <laughs> he goes, and sunshine and all that yeah. stuff. And he goes, and it's really hard to be pissed off. You know, mm-hmm. like that's he would true, say. Yeah. So there's nice something too. that's like a Brooklyn or like a New York thing. Mm-hmm. I still hear in newer bands that I do know of that are out of Brooklyn and, wow, and the okay. New York area. It's like, there's still, it's like, yeah, there's that stylistic thread of that pissed offedness that's still mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. you know? So I think that's great. You know, it's, I don't, mm-hmm. it's again, it's, it's different than the scene I know that I mm-hmm. knew and grew up in, but it's still same in a lot of the, in a lot of ways. Like, you know, it's still, and it's, it's just cool to see that, you know, and, and there's still my friends, you know, still playing they're, they're for brooklyn like inhuman still yeah. playing and kicking still everybody's playing. ass the yeah. last stand uh max penn still plays out every now and again mm. you know there's still you know i mean i know well, bio, bio has it just got back together too they're yeah fun, yeah, so. yeah. It's yeah still happening right. and mm-hmm. yeah it's cool stuff i i just think yeah. it's you know the the brooklyn sound is still alive but it's evolved you know it's it's sure. turned into something else mm-hmm. but it's not not a bad thing you know, it's still got that thread that I'm proud of, that angry, you know, mm-hmm. like in your face, pissed off at this, you know, it's like, oh, what mm-hmm. I call it. It's like, it always sounds, something's, even if it's not totally over the top, obviously angry, there's like that anger right below the lid, like, you know, right mm-hmm. under the surface. That's always there, even in like bands that are more like, um, like an Interpolish, like that okay, band Interpol, sure. like a band Interpol. like mm-hmm. that. Mm. Like there's stuff, even those bands that come out of there are still, there's still something edgy about it that I dig, you know, mm-hmm, that's cool. Not to yeah. ramble, but <laughs> I'm trying no, to think of sure, the no, best no, way no. to kind of explain what I'm getting at. <laughs> well, no, and it's an experience like you said, how Henry Rollins said, I mean, you're talking about millions and millions of people living in this tiny little geographically tiny spot. It, it you people are going to just be mad and angry because humans like their space and there's not much space in new york city bottom line for all those people you know so yeah you know it's like you're almost always in a constant state of stress even if you don't realize it exactly you know yep, like yep. i've talked to some people about that and they're like yeah it's almost like even the old lady who lived her whole life in brooklyn it's like at some point like you know she was always 
under, even though she's a smiley, happy old lady, it's like, you're still, you learn to live with that constant mm -hmm. stress and it becomes normal. It's not even, it's a stress, but it's not like, you know, it's not setting you off every day, you know, but sure, it puts yeah. you closer to getting set off. <laughs> <you know? laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cause you're always in that, like, totally. you know, that's why I, you know, I've, I've, when I was younger and you know, even still now, I, I still get, I could get pretty pissed off pretty quickly, you know, but mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it's kind of ingrained in you, you know, yeah, from sure. growing up there, you know? I try, yeah, it is. And, and I've been out, I haven't lived in New York in over 20 years and I still have that. So it doesn't go away. I'll just, I'll just right. say that, right? It just doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't yeah. leave you. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, Eric, so where, where, you know, can we send out, you know, cause you've got all these different projects and everything. What's the best place where, you know, people can go, you know, check out all your projects. I mean, do you have any, like a, a place where they, you know, uh, where there's like a one-stop spot for your stuff or is no. it all individualized? Like where, what's the best way to people like, like, let's just even, you know, we'll talk, um, we'll take for instance, first order, where would be like, where could people go check out, you know, the first order stuff for, you know, mm. for that, for that. Yeah, they could pick it up from uh faster and louder records. Okay. Okay. If they go on that site, it'll be, probably like the second release down because he just released something like last mm -hmm. week so okay. uh we'll be right there you could totally pick it up from them right there you know he's got instructions on how you make the whole thing happen the transaction and all that stuff uh mm -hmm. yeah that stuff's there most of it because again i'm not like actively chasing a lot of stuff but i blab a lot about my stuff on facebook on my personal okay. page but i don't have like band pages and things like that right. i'm just okay. kind of keeping it more th there is no one-stop shop unfortunately but I, right. I have like domain names that are just sitting sure. right mm -hmm. now that once i have something it'll pop up somewhere you know and i can let everybody know that way but very uh cool. now there's nothing right now that's a one-stop shop okay very well right. i'm real professional <laughs> <laughs> so the best place to would maybe go to your facebook page or something right people could check mm -hmm. out what you got going on right okay yeah yeah because so i blab on there i mean i put stuff about my dog and my family on there too so <laughs> okay <laughs> It's real normal. There's some pedestrian stuff on there, and then there's some creative okay. stuff on there. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Makes me more true. like as some people have said. It's like no, it's it mean you're more human that way, and people sure. kind of gravitate towards that. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh wow, you know, his son made mm -hmm. honor roll. <laughs> you know, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> you know, shit like that, and then I'm like, hey, got a nasty project coming out. Go check this out. You know, and then it's mm -hmm. here's a picture of my dog. <laughs> the next day it's, I, yeah. I gotta tell you Eric normally when we do interviews they're probably 30-35 minutes ish like we're 46-47 minutes in we could go uh -huh. for another hour but you know mm -hmm. just on behalf of Matt and I just you know thank you for, for being part of the show tonight I knew this was going to be a hit because when I spoke to Matt you know going back uh, you know a couple of months ago uh, a couple of weeks ago I said I want to have Eric on and then we did our own research and I said no research you need to do this is just a good guy get him on let's do it let's talk and it's happened so you know yeah. thanks for for being here for yeah, being part of aftershocks sure. tv it's just uh it's just an honor to have you here buddy and i can i can say i had a beer with this gentleman here so it's all cool yes all nice. indeed no thank you guys so much for having me i really appreciate it it's yeah. really nice of you to have me on and you know let me kind of spread the word a little bit you know about stuff sure that's thing. cooking yeah